What's going on, YouTube? So today, we're gonna talk about something that I get asked about way too often. By the way, you like the hat? All right, so pretty much what I have planned for this video is a rant. We're gonna paint this car start to finish, except the doors, because I'm gonna use those for my short videos. But we're gonna paint this whole car together while we talk about something that I think is extremely misunderstood within the painting community. And it has to do with your pressure regulator. Based on the questions I get asked, and I think it's more so by the people that watch my shorts than you guys, but I want to address it anyway. Now, a lot of guys, what they do is they predetermine what pressure they're gonna spray at before they even start spraying. Basically, they treat the pressure that they're gonna spray at as the be all end all. I think that's how the saying goes. Uh-oh, we're gonna get in trouble here because this tailgate is not open all the way and I gotta put sealer here and if I get sealer in there, there's no way I'm gonna cover it. Now the question that I was referring to, what pressure do you spray at? Most of you guys who have been watching me for a while have probably noticed by now, I don't even use a regulator. Now I did put a regulator on my Iwata for this video to try to prove a point. Not sure if I'm gonna be able to prove it over camera, but I'm gonna try. Now I didn't use that voice to be condescending or offend anyone. If I did, I apologize, but I need your attention. Now, before I get into explaining how you guys, or maybe not you guys, but how I know a lot of people are using this regulator incorrectly, I want to give you guys an example of something. So right now, I have us set at 20 PSI. Right, now I'm gonna just lay my first coat on how I normally would. By the way, if anyone's gonna ask, this is waterborne paint that I'm shooting right now. So that's 20 PSI here. Let's shoot this at 20 PSI. You can see the material, it's going down great. Breaking up great. And everything looks good. Now this is definitely higher pressure than I normally shoot at, right? But nonetheless, you definitely got a sharp finish, right? Now let's go ahead and adjust this to 15 PSI. Okay, now you can see I'm even below 15 PSI. Let's shoot this quarter. Still looks like it's coming out great to me. I mean, what do you guys think? Does that still look great to you? A little dry spot right there. Still looks good to me. Did the pressure make that much of a difference? Now, before I, I get into how a lot of painters are definitely using their regulator incorrectly, I'm gonna tell you guys a little about myself and how I learned to paint. All right, so we're gonna put our medium wet coat on now. Basically, I learned to paint from an old guy who threw me in the booth and just let me figure it out. I mean, he let me make mistakes. He didn't get mad when I messed up. And he explained what I did wrong and told me how to fix it and then let me go do it until I fixed it. Sometimes it was, uh, it was pretty stressful. <laughs> but anything worth learning in life is gonna be stressful. Now, one of the biggest things I learned from him was how he adjusted his gun. I remember asking him like it was yesterday. How do you know what pressure you're shooting at if you don't have a regulator on your gun? 
And his answer was, oh, I do it by eye and by ear. I was like, what do you mean you do it by eye and by ear? He goes, well, I've been painting so long, I could pretty much tell you what pressure I'm at just by the sound of the gun, which at first I thought was a load of bullshit, but it's not because, I mean, I've been painting long enough to do it myself now. And when he said by eye, what he meant was, how does the paint look when it's coming out of my gun? Does it look how I want it to look? If it does, great. I'm not gonna touch anything. If it doesn't, I'll adjust it until it does. Now, looking back, I think that was one of the greatest lessons he ever taught me. And I have a perfect example of why that is right now. So we have two coats on here and you can see our sealer edge right there still. Now, not using a regulator puts you in a position where you have to experiment a lot with your pressure. If I didn't have to experiment so much with my pressure, I wouldn't know that I can drop down my pressure, let the material come out nice and chunky, and smooth out that edge. So right now, I'm at 10 PSI, and I'm going to go directly over that sealer edge here and in front here. Hopefully the camera picks it up. Looks like you can kind of see it. You can definitely see this one. So I'll just go right over my sealer edge. Nice and chunky. Look at how thick that material is coming out. And just like that, our sealer edge is about 90% gone. Now there's two ways that I know most painters are using their regulators incorrectly the first one not so technical but what they do is they use it as a crutch they use it as something that's absolutely necessary to do their paint job and anytime you have to rely on anything to do anything at all it's usually not a good thing for example if you go to the gym and you take pre-workout you get into a habit where you can't go to the gym without your pre-workout you smoke cigarettes. You can't go about your day normally without your cigarettes. So just in general, the less things that you have to rely on in life, the better. Now, the second way and the more important way that a lot of painters are using their regulators incorrectly is they use it to get to a predetermined pressure. But that's wrong because 20 PSI today might be great but tomorrow it might not there's just so many variables like the environment the temperature the humidity the viscosity of your paint the type of paint that you're spraying the correct way to use a regulator is first set your gun up by ear shoot it at a spray out card see what's coming out mess with it until you get the desired finish out of the gun then know what pressure your gun is at now you use your regulator for consistency the regulator does not determine your pressure the paint should be determining your pressure once your paint tells you this is what i want you use your regulator to consistently get that result okay now to prove my point, by the way, I just got this neck mount. I haven't been using it this video. I just put it on now. Let me know how you guys like the angle, the audio, and all that stuff in this in these last two clips, I guess. So now in an effort to not take up too much more of your guys' time, I'm going to demonstrate what I've been saying on this door, okay? So we're going to do both coats of clear together on this door. I do not have a regulator on this gun, obviously, as you can see. Don't know what pressure I'm at. Going by ear, sounds a little low, but that's okay, because that's what I want. Let's see how it's laying. Looks like I could use a little more pressure. See how it lays. Now it's breaking up how I want. So I just used my eyes and my ears to set my gun up. Let's see how this panel comes out.
I'm using Luma Base 2000. I'm sorry, Luma Base 3000. I have my fan and my fluid both wide open. All right, that's our first coat. I'm gonna go ahead and spray everything else at my unknown pressure, and we'll see how this all comes out. Okay, we're back for our last coat. I have my pressure at whatever it was at before. I'm gonna lower it down a little for my second coat. Let's see how it comes out. Beautiful, got it where I want it. Use my ears, use my eyes. Let's lay this second coat. And usually on my second coat, I slow it down a little bit. So I'll hold my gun a little closer and I'll slow my passes down. because I want less overspray on my second coat. It's been a while since I shot this Luma Base 3000. All right, I'm gonna clear the rest of this stuff up and then I'll bring you guys back. All right, real quick, before I show you guys the finished results, I just wanted to mention, I made a post yesterday about the giveaway. Yesterday when I posted, there was three shirts left. Now there's two. Uh, what I did was I posted the sales report directly from my store so you guys can see exactly how many shirts were sold. Just wanted to be transparent with you guys. Anyway, we got two more shirts. Soon as those sell, I'm shipping these up randomly picking a winner and throwing the gun in with one of the shirts and here's our finished product so you see i didn't use a regulator didn't need a regulator used my eyes used my ears got great results all right guys thank you so much for watching i really appreciate it if you enjoyed the video got any value out of it or were entertained if you could drop a like Maybe a comment and even subscribe. Till the next time. Peace.